Well, it's been a while between all the uh, new desk and Steam Deck and all sorts of fun new toys and other shit going on. I haven't really had much time to, to mess around with uh, Millipede, but I did get this uh, Millipede PCB to Centipede uh, cabinet adapter. So we're going to throw this back in there and get a little recap of where we're at so far. All right, so we have Millipede installed into the uh, Centipede cabinet. Let's turn the light off and turn this on. Let's see what happens. Now, if anybody's seen the last video, you might have a good idea of what happens. The game board is working. We have a pretty good picture. Well, at least the background's working correctly. The motion objects are all outside the bounds of the screen. And it's actually kind of funny because uh, it's not supposed to draw that far down. And once you start getting that far down, you start getting some, uh, well, how, how do I put it? It is getting a horizontal sync signal, obviously, otherwise it wouldn't be syncing correctly, but it is drawing outside the bounds of the screen, although not so far that the uh, screen automatically blinks and sweeps back over. So you're getting some uh, issue where uh, it's drawing so far off the screen that it's reflecting off the, si the bell of the tube, and you can see some of that weird uh, reflective uh, funk. You can sort of see some weird shit going on there where it's actually reflecting off the side of the tube and uh, uh, folding over. It's not like vertical fold over. It's like when you get the vertical so wide that it starts reflecting back. It's kind of a weird, weird uh, sight. However, the uh, the play field is working correctly now, so that's good. Uh, we got uh, free play mode activated, so it's not doing that weird color thing like it was doing on the on the. Um, the scaler, so that's just a scaler artifact. That's the problem with using a scaler to uh, test your video games and stuff because it's not always reflective of what you're going to actually see on a monitor. So let's turn it, uh, start the game, test the sound. So as you can see, I can shoot mushrooms. And all that good shit. The sound's all working. This play field is kind of changing colors as it goes along. It's because all this shit happening at the top and bottom. I'm not entirely sure. But that's definitely a little bit strange. So we're going to have to figure out what's going on with the horizontal uh, placing of motion objects. And then after that, we might have to look at horizontal blanking. However, if we get the objects to place correctly, we might not have to worry about blanking because there won't be anything drawn in there. Unless this uh, weird background flashing uh, won't go away. I'm not entirely sure. So, let's try uh, looking at it. See what happens. Alright, how's this shit go back together again? All right, we're all hooked up again, and uh, I guess that means I'm going to have to look at some schematics and figure out what the fuck is uh, what I'm even supposed to be looking at here. Where did I put that? All right, good. I was, I was hoping I didn't uh, put it in the pile of uh, bad shit like this uh, RAM chip here. So... We know that the computer can read from VRAM, and it has no issues in test mode and it boots up properly. So I don't think this is gonna be a video RAM issue like it was the past couple times. This is actually gonna be a part of the hardware that draws the, uh, the sprites to the screen because the computer seems to know exactly where the sprites are supposed to be and it's acting as if it's playing normally. It just doesn't know anything that happens after uh, it places uh, everything in the VRAM, anything that goes to the monitor. This thing is completely ignorant about. So. We're gonna have to look at the uh, the video output or video output side of things, and um, while I'm doing that, I'll have to think about what I'm gonna put on this thumbnail. I keep on just upping the ante with uh, power tools and shit. Maybe one of these days I'll just have to, have to point a handgun or rifle at a board or something like that. So these schematics make it pretty nice and easy to figure out kind of what's going on. At least I think so. So you got everything uh, in little blocks here, uh, separating everything into what they do. We have motion object control. That pro that's probably coming from the uh, video RAM and going into this. And this tells it when to draw motion objects. Picture memory, that might be for drawing the play field. Horizontal position is what we're going to be looking at. This is what's probably going to be horizontally 
positioning the emotion objects, line buffer, it's just a buffer or something like that. Color memory, address selectors, and motion object color selectors. So uh, we got background memory or background colors, motion object colors, which I'm thinking is working, but I'm not entirely sure. I'll wait until I get the objects actually on screen before I can determine whether the colors are working cor correctly or not. Color memory, which is where the game puts its uh, palette, and the color output, which goes straight to the monitor. So this is what's actually drawing all the uh, the shit on the screen. So we're gonna look at this horizontal position, and here we got. I don't know if this is a latch or something like that, and then some counters for horizontal positioning. But we're going to be looking at, or I'm going to be probing some of those uh, pins to make sure everything is functioning properly. Although I don't have a, uh, a logic analyzer, which would be handy for these sort of things, because uh, counters can get kind of dicey if I only got two channels on my scope. I'd need like four channel scope to properly see what the hell is going on here, or even a, just a logic analyzer. That seems like it would be a very handy thing to have if I'm going to get into any uh, big time repair shit, but I'm just doing millipede boards. This is easy peasy. All right, I haven't even gotten my scope out, and I'm just poking around with this logic probe here, and I already found a major problem. So here's a uh, chip 9D. Yeah, that's the correct one. Pin 3. We just got a constant high signal. On the input of two, we got a uh, you know blinky blinky. One, we got a high constant, but this one right here should be doing something because what that is that appears to be the clock pin for both of these counters. And uh, without a clock pin doing anything, these counters aren't going to do anything. And those counters are probably what's responsible for uh, putting our horizontal objects or the motion motion objects into the horizontal axis. So let's uh, look at that some more. So I'm wrong. Um, that's not the clock. That's a clear signal. However, that should still be doing something since uh, this gets its signals from here and here. Um, I'm an idiot. One moment. So this gets a blinky blinky. This does not get a blinky blinky. These two signals here, this is 256 HD, which is running a running sort of clock from the uh, video generation. And this one gets a signal for over here from 256 H which is also another video generation signal. One of these is not getting a signal. So let's see here, let's check 9D1 and 2 just to make sure that I'm on the right track here. 9D1 and 2, 1, stuck high, 2 is blinky blinky. So that's right, I was right. Here we got 10E, chip 10E, we got pins 9 and 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten is getting the blinky blinky, so that's two fifty six H. This one's stuck low. This is uh, two fifty six H D. Where does that signal come from? That one should be a um, one of those signals that just runs. One of this thing here. Let's go up to our synchronization area. That's probably where that comes from. Horizontal sync chain. We're looking for 256 HD. This guy right here. Why is this guy not? Or is it inverse? Inverse or positive? Let's uh, double check. 256 HD inverse. HD probably has something to do with a uh, horizontal something or other. 256 2 HD. 256 HD comes from uh, pin 5 of Q of 10D. So what's pin 5 of 10D doing? What's up 10D? You got nothing. No? No bad solder joints. I love data sheets. Here we have, let's see here, we got six pins per um, per side of this flip-flop that I was probing. We have a clear, we have a set, we have a clock, we have a data. Set is C, or SD, clear is CD. But on the inputs on the truth table, they're both SD. Which one's which? I don't know. But I also don't care because if I look right here, we have the, um, 
the P and the C, which are um, the set and the clear, I'm pretty sure. Those are both tied high, so those will never be activated ever. So these first three lines in the truth table will not be, uh, will not mean anything. So it will always should run depending on what the data incoming is. And the data comes from, I don't know, some other shit. So we got clock. So we're going to check pins 2, 3, and 5 of 10D. So 2, 3, Yeah, so this thing is bad. We're not we're missing a clock. Uh, and it looks like it's also driving 10 D or 12. So pin 12 of that same chip should be driven by the output of pin 5. So 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12. So that's also going to be stuck. So whatever this um, output for this one is here, 256 2HD, is not going to be functioning either. Let's check pin 9 of that one too, just to verify. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's doing nothing. 256 2HD, I'm going to guess, has something to do with the horizontal position, positioning as well. It has to do with cut color memory address selectors. 2HD. That's doing nothing. So there's something wrong with the colors as well. So that chip. My poor uh, centipede board that I repaired last time is getting a punishing. However, I do notice I have a uh, 74LS74AN right here that I have socketed from when I was fucking around with that one. So that means I gotta have one in here somewhere. Oh yeah, 74 LS, 74 AM, that's what I'm looking for, baby. Well, I changed it in. Oh, actually, no, I didn't. I just put a socket in there. Uh, where's my chip? Now I got a bunch of deoxid on there. I'm going to shove this in here. We're going to watch it pop in because I'm dumb. And uh, I want to bend the pins on this IC in real time as you can watch it on the screen. Let's try that again. I'm going to pop this chip in here while it's running. And while I got my... Uh, fingers in the way. Ah, oh, that, that sure looks like a, a millipede. I'm not sure how the colors are looking. But I have an idea. That looks like it's working pretty good. I'm going to pop it back into the cabinet and see if I can play a game of millipede on there. That might... Everything looks alright as far as colors go. Nothing's crazy out of whack. I've not really seen what Millipede's supposed to look like. But, that looks pretty close. What's going on there? Why did the Millipede slow down and why is it slowing feeding back up? What's going on here? Let me pop this in the cabinet. Alright, time to see if our game is fixed. Well, my game. Not ours. Mine. That's looking pretty, uh, looking pretty millipede to me. Millipede's red. The colors are looking a little better. Is that millipede supposed to slow down and then speed up? I'm not entirely sure of the, uh, correct function of that. That's kind of weird. Seems like a very weird thing for it to do. Maybe it is supposed to do that. I just never noticed until now. Yeah, it slows down here. Why does it do that? Okay, so that is working. Alright, so that means I can call my millipede working.
Um, I need to put the EROM, EA ROM, EROM back in. Let me grab my tripod. I'm going to play this. So as a little overview of what happened and what was causing and what, it all starts back at the clock. It generates the clock for the CPU and the video. You just counter separate it into all your horizontal uh, counting signals, sync signals, all that stuff. Then we have our 256H signal, which goes into our bad flip flop that turns it into uh, 256HD and 256H2D and inverse 256HD. So we go down to uh, the horizontal positioning. We have our inverse 256 HD right here, and that was not working. So the clear signals on these counters were not working. So it's not placing the objects where it needed to be. And then if we go down to color memory, this stuff, we have uh, 256 HD over here, and that would drive this. I'm pretty sure this is for the background objects. So if you might remember the uh, behind the motion objects that were outside the bounds of the screen. They had uh, these blinking, like, green vertical bars behind them in the background. That was probably caused by this not turning off the color output when, when the uh, game is drawing outside of the screen area. And right here we have 256 HD, which affects the color of the emotion objects, which is probably why they are all white or wrong colors. So uh, those are the three signals I could find so far. I think there's one more. No, that's all three of them that were bad. And uh, I think that was just the, the cause of our issue, obviously. Well, it was the cause of the issue because the chip was banned, but that's just what it was doing is affecting those specific certain circuits so that it was uh, doing weird shit. All right. So I got the thing running. Seems to be working. We'll play a game of Millipede. Never played uh, Millipede before. Well, besides, you know, two seconds on the emulator, so I don't know. I, I can get up to about 90,000 on Centipede, so I'm not going to expect anything that high on Millipede. Let's see if we can nail this thing. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. So the ladybug brings the whole play field down. Yeah, maybe that's how you get more uh, DDT. Okay. The increasing score bonus for hitting those. It's sort of like Robotron uh, human humanoid. That wasn't very good. I'm starting to hear the reason why they have two pokies in this thing. There's a lot of noise going on. Let's try that again. Let's try it from hard. Two spiders? Okay. We're not fucking around anymore. I do like games that let you start out harder, just to get past the easy shit. 
you imagine how boring Atari Star Wars would be if you couldn't start on hard difficulty immediately? If you had to go through like five rounds of the game just to get to the point where you can, you know, get some good bonus from hitting all the, the tops of the french fries. Oh, oh. So I guess poison millipedes, millipede heads turn uh, a different color when they're coming straight down at you. Wow. Please fuck off. I don't appreciate your presence, sir. sort of see the artifacts of it trying to move everything as fast as possible when you hit one of those you can see that uh, movable play field start to kind of shift up a little bit for a frame that's kind of neat Ooh. I think this game scores higher there's just so much more going on I know you're over there taunting me. Oh, come on. That spider just kind of hangs out the side there, just kind of intimidating. Very cool. So that's a working uh, millipede now. That was very cool. I guess you need to uh, continue for some more bonus points. That was a quick little fix for the rest of that. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be.